you will note that if one was a legal Puritan, the main affidavit by the Honorable Raila Molo Dinga is actually a defective affidavit. My learned teacher, Feroz Noroji, is yeah, you cannot start an affidavit with we. I'm simply characterizing that affidavit. Number two, you will note that the affidavits offend Order 19, Rule 1 of the Civil Procedure Rules. The affidavits are full of hearsay, and I want to submit that Article 159 is the refuge of those who are on a fishing expedition. I'm inviting your lordships and your ladyships to examine those affidavits to their full effect. So that your lordships and your ladyships, that is what animated this case. And that is the reason why the pleadings are the way they are. My Lord, the maxim of law used to be de minimis non curat lex. <laughs> Professor Zhuang taught me that, and he'll remember. Of small things, the law knows no cure. And I'm submitting <laughs> to us that what we have here are petty grievances, administrative errors, and no court in the world has ever nullified a presidential election on the basis of what falls under the de minimis rule. Tiende, in his submission, says that this court should only focus on what he describes, describes as the substantive. In other words, numbers do not matter in an election. My lords and your ladyships, what then matters in an election? What matters in an election is that individuals come and vote, and those votes are counted, and the voice, the will of the people is expressed in that way. I allow you to Article 86 of the Constitution we say that at every election, the Independent Electoral Commission shall ensure that whatever voting method is used, the system is simple, accurate, verifiable. I'll not address you on those details. My good friend Tiende went into characterizing those. Who must verify? In whose eyes must they be simple? Madame Sibe, CJ, CJ, as he then was in the case of Stanley Munga Gidonguri, said, the test is the man in the Pangani bus, the ordinary man. What you are shown here, complete with Pythagoras' theorem, <laughs> to tell us what the voting went, that is not what the test of the election is. The test is very simple. And we have demonstrated through our affidavits that are on record, which I invite you to look at to their full effect, then the burden shifts. Nothing, respectfully, your lordships and your ladyships can be farther from the truth. The truth is, and this is the rule of the thumb, he who alleges must prove. And I'm submitting to you that your petitioners have made allegations, they have made many things, but they have not proven anything. In totality, what you have is a litany of allegations that are literally standing on stilts and have only one fate. They fall when they have been faced by the weight of evidence that we have supplied. That in this petition, what we are grappling with is that the people of Kenya, in their totality, came out on the 8th day of August and expressed their will. This court should be very reluctant to overturn the will of the people of Kenya unless it can be demonstrated that indeed that will was subverted. And it has been demonstrated by the first respondent and of the, second respond, the first and the second respondent that indeed all the prescriptions of the law, and this, my Lord, when you retire, I do not want to belabor this issue, when you retire, the question that I invite you respectfully to ask, what is the litmus test? And my Lord, when you look at our list of authorities, which 
has a number of authorities which I'll not take you through. It was filed on the 25th day of August, the year 2017, with a total of 30 authorities. The first authority is the Constitution. And what we invite your lordships and your ladyships to do is to look at the constitution and ask the question, did these elect prescriptions of Article 81? And in my respectful submission, it did. Did it satisfy the prescriptions of Article 86? And in my respectful submission, it did. And once you've looked at the constitution, the next question that you will ask yourselves, that when you look at the enabling legislation, did it satisfy those pieces of legislation? Did it satisfy the regulations? And the answer is that it did. And when you arrive at that finding, the only decision that I invite you to arrive at is that the people of the Republic of Kenya on the eighth day of August did express their will and the first and second respondent did midwife Remember your lordships and your ladyships, ours is midwifery. We deliver a baby. That baby is alive and well. You are being asked to strangle the baby. Decline the invitation. Decline the invitation because the baby is alive and well. The election of a president is a process. It is not an event. And if you look at the totality of the process, you will discover that this process is a process that satisfied the requirements of the law. And we have demonstrated at the point of identification, at the point of uh, result, the point of counting, the forms 34, forms 34A, B, C, and D, up to the transmission, and we have demonstrated beyond peradventure that indeed this was an election that complied with the law. Your petitioners, through their agent, they won fate. The fate of dismissal. But there are two things I want to say before I sit down. That when you look at your petitioners, written submissions, they suffer the same fate as all their pleadings. The rule of the thumb is that you don't use your submissions to introduce new evidence. Their submissions are used to introduce new evidence, thus offending all the rules that govern written submissions. In a nutshell, my lords, and your ladyship, respectful submission is a petition that is dead on arrival. What you have before you is a petition that is replete with speculation, is a, is a petition that does not have the evidential weight that is worthy of overturning the election that was conducted by the first respondent and its chairman, the chairman of the IBC. I therefore respectfully submit on the basis of the submission that have been made on our behalf, on the basis of the affidavits that have been filed, on the basis of the authorities that we have filed, on the basis of our written submissions, which you'll have the opportunity to read in their full flavor, to come to a finding that this petition is without merit and to dismiss it with costs to your respondents. Those are my respectful submissions unless your lordships and your ladyships want me to clarify anything.